Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Sony Cybershot DSC RX100 Mark IV. Priced at $950 US dollars, this is the most expensive RX100 to date, but also the most feature rich, and that says a lot considering the RX100, when it originally launched, set a new standard for our expectations from a point and shoot Cybershot camera, or from any point and shoot camera for that matter, especially one that was pocketable, or I should say is pocketable. And that depends really on your pocket. With that out of the way, let's talk about features and let me get this thing out of the box. And I have covered every generation of the RX100. This one uh, at 950, I mentioned the most expensive, but also the most feature rich. And you can see right there a quick rundown of the specifications. Still working with a one inch sensor, 20.1 megapixels. It is a backlit sensor. Uh, some improvements, more so to the overall function of the camera. Uh, we still have a 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent lens, Carl Zeiss, uh, pretty, I would say, fairly bright lens for its class, uh, f1.8 to 2.8, a built-in EVF, which is OLED based, that also has been improved from the previous generation. Uh, we also have high speed uh, capability now in terms of 960 frames per second because of the DRAM stacked on the actual sensor itself, and that is at 1080p. So. Uh, this is a whole nother level of high-speed recording in a pocketable uh, form. We also have, uh, and that's where right there you see the 40x Super Slow Mo, 180 degree tiltable LCD screen so you can frame selfies easily. And also this camera for the first time in Sony's lineup in a point and shoot is capable of recording UHD video, that is uh, 4K. Um, and that is in the XAVCS format. This is still sticking with uh, the original battery that Sony has been using across all of their uh, generations of cyber shots right there, the NPBX1. And basically, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, there is an application store on here. Uh, it has the multi-port. Uh, uh, the Bions X is still the processor powering this. Not really much else to do other than get it out of the box. And I am excited to share this. It is expensive, but for those of you that know what the RX100 has done in the past, well, then you kind of expected or saw this coming. So first the paperwork, basically what you would expect, quite a bit of paper actually in 2015. And then let's get to the prize here. Basically identical in terms of actual form. I'll get it out in a second. Let's look at accessories. Sony does rely on a wall charger, uh, but when I say wall charger, this is just going to use a USB cable like basically every camera that Sony's been making now for years and plug into uh, the body itself. So you will be relying uh, on a micro USB charging solution, which means you don't have to use Sony's uh, included charger. You can pretty much hook this up to a battery pack like you'd use for your cell phone. That is one advantage to using micro USB. There's the NPBX1 uh, that I mentioned before. Uh, strap uh, right there and the USB cable, which you'll connect to uh, the wall wart that I was just showing right here. Move that out of the way. And the actual hand strap, which they probably could have included something a little better considering this is nearly $1,000. But let me move the box out of the way and get to the camera. So really, what is the key to this $950 camera? It's all about what I mentioned before. The critical difference between this and the previous generation is the UHD video capture, which by the way is capped at five minutes for those of you that were looking for longer recording. Sony's uh, basically telling you that you need to step to a different model, uh, whether that has to do with overheating or just actual, I'm not gonna say built-in obsolescence because that's not the correct phrase for this, but limitations. Uh, of the actual camera or Sony limiting it intentionally? I can't answer that question. In all likelihood though, it does have to do with the limitations of the camera and overheating issues because that is something that has plagued basically every camera attempting to record in UHD for some time. That's why Panasonic was one of the first companies to roll out point and shoot uh, class cameras with UHD and 4K recording, Samsung uh, shortly thereafter, but they weren't point and shoot. That's the NX line that I covered uh, a while back. Built-in flash right uh, here at the top. The OLED viewfinder pops right out. Uh, twice the resolution, I believe, of the previous generation. The tiltable LCD, you can see right there, goes all the way around. Uh, again, giving you that selfie capability, which is nice. And uh, the Carl Zeiss branding, you can see right here on the front end. 
And there's no question this is a fast piece of glass. Your NFC contact point right there. Again, that switch for the uh, OLED viewfinder, which for those of you that require reading glasses, it's a must have to have a viewfinder. Uh, on the right side, we have an HDMI and multi-function port, which is basically the charging port uh, that Sony calls a multi-port because it can also use other accessories uh, like the remote control that I'm using right now with the AX100 to basically start and stop my recordings. Uh, in terms of the HDMI out, if I can get it open without ripping my nail off, thin plastic uh, cover uh, coverage for these. Uh, no weatherproofing on this camera to my knowledge, but there is the HDMI out and pretty much uh, the same exact build layout. The only thing that I've noticed, if I can get this closed, is that Sony has changed the texture on the ring here, which you can assign to either zoom or focus, a matter of personal preference. Uh, but beyond that, pretty much everything is identical. Your mode dial right here, power button, your zoom rocker, shutter button, uh, the flash ejection button, I will say, the launcher button for the flash, and that's pretty much it. Down at the bottom, our tripod mount, as well as our battery bay, which is also where you'll be throwing in your SD card. Keep in mind, to record in UHD, you will need a Class 10 uh, UHS-3 card, like I've reviewed several of them. Uh, they used to be very pricey. That isn't the case anymore. So if you're asking yourself whether or not this is worth $950, it really comes down to personal use and preference. Uh, its sibling, the uh, last-gen RX100, uh, Mark III is still extraordinarily relevant, and that's because you're looking at nearly the same camera, uh, but the primary difference, as I mentioned earlier, is that the RX100 Mark III that's in my left hand is not capable of UHD video, nor is it capable of uh, 960 frames per second uh, 1080p video. So if you're interested in that high-speed recording or UHD video, in other words, uh, if you are a little bit more video-centric or want the best of both worlds, that's why the RX100 Mark IV carries that additional premium. Otherwise, these are very similar, and you can't go wrong with either one. I'll reiterate that over and over again, just to give you a quick side-by-side, -side, and I will be comparing these eventually, but this is just for those of you that wanted something right out of the box. I figured why not provide what I could um, and just give you a quick look at exactly what they uh, share or don't in terms of similarities. I mentioned the ring having a different texture, but pretty much everything else is the same. It just comes down to those features uh, that I mentioned in the video department. Uh, also, the RX100 Mark IV is a faster camera. Let me mention that as well. So the actual autofocus speed, as well as uh, the rate at which you can shoot shots uh, successively, has gone up in the right-hand side. Again, the Mark IV. So that pretty much sums up the major differences. Otherwise, in terms of design cues, Sony hasn't changed anything because, well, quite frankly, they've done a great job uh, with both generations, or I, sh I really should say all of the generations, because they pretty much have addressed every complaint that anyone ever had uh, with any of the RX100s. And they've kept, and that's part of the reason they've kept all of the previous generations relevant. Uh, so, don't expect to see, even though some models will be on sale, like the original and the Mark II, uh, don't expect the Mark III to drop quickly simply because it is another price point for another consumer that really cares about still and doesn't care about video. I mean, if you don't have a UHD monitor or television to enjoy the video you capture here, then you probably don't need the Mark IV, although I do recommend to anyone in photography, even if you don't have an interest in video, if you ever think you're going to take it, it is a good step in uh, future proofing, I should say a measure, because without question, uh, UHD, even if you're not using it now, will be no differently than uh, HD was a standard before many people adopted it. I know back in 2006, 2005, I started shooting in HD. A lot of people thought I was nuts then, and well, I don't have to tell you, I'm glad I captured what I did in HD then, because had it been 480p, I would have been, uh, well, at a loss for words, at least in this video. Uh, so definitely a good measure. Is it worth the difference? Again, it really comes down to what type of consumer you are and what you're looking to get out of your pocket because that's exactly what this camera does better than anyone else in the business. Of course, I will have to put it to the test. I'll be putting up video samples, both the high-speed video, that 960 uh, frames per second, as well as some UHD content, and giving you all updates and eventually the digitally digested treatment 
uh, but I am excited to share it with you. Again, very expensive, but nothing else like it on the market. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.